These quotes are from Andrei Tarkovsky's Sculpting in Time. The only condition of fighting for the right to create is faith in your own vocation, readiness to serve, and refusal to compromise. An artist who has no faith is like a painter who was born blind. The genius is revealed not in the absolute perfection of a work, but in the absolute fidelity to themselves in commitment to their own passion. I was a teenager when I discovered Martin's work. With the light of his own making, he illuminated unknown worlds that pulsed with a dangerous, irresistible energy. Worlds that were mysterious to me and utterly enthralling. He illuminated the vast, beautiful landscape of what is possible in film. And he clarified for me what it is that one must ask of oneself to work in faith. One of the greatest joys and most unexpected privileges of my life was to find myself one day working with him. I'm grateful to the National Board of Review for so justly recognizing the supreme, inimitable artistry of this mighty man. To every person that works in the crucible of the imagination, he is a living treasure. As a man, and as a filmmaker, I love and revere him for his devastating telling of the story of the Killers of the Flower Moon. The Best Director Award goes to Martin Scorsese. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Daniel, to um, receive this uh, honor presented by, by Daniel is just an honor in itself for me. I mean, we only did, we did two films together. And uh, this is one of, the, you know, the, the, one of the greatest experiences of my life, I must say. And um, maybe there's time for one more. Ah, maybe. Okay. He's the best. I can't tell you. I cannot tell you. I, um, I got to thank you, Daniel. Thank you for coming here tonight and doing this. I thank the National Board of Review again. It's just remarkable. I, I have to mention a few names tonight. Uh, I want to make sure because this it may be it for us in terms of our, our presentations. Um, but Dan Friedkin and Bradley Thomas uh, of Imperative, who um, uh, gave us the book, actually, and Apple, um, Tim Cook and um, Zach Van Amberg and uh, Jamie Ehrlich and Eddie Q. People always use that word support, but support doesn't really, it's become abstract. You don't know what support is until you work with people like them, because these guys are amazing. Uh, Paramount and ultimately uh, the Osage Nation itself. Um, some of the crew members are here, some of the group, the team, who made the film here tonight. Rodrigo, of course, and Thelma Schoonmaker, the editor. Um, Mary Ann Bauer, who's associate producer and researching. Dan Lupi, our producer. And Ellen, Ellen Lewis on casting. And, and um, some of the actors are here. Um, the magnificent um, Lily Gladstone. Um, Tully Redcorn and Yancey Redcorn and William Below. Um, and actors who, you know, couldn't be here tonight, my, my old friend Bob De Niro, Jesse Plemons, and so many others. But I'd like to take just a, a couple of minutes to talk about uh, my other old friend, uh, 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 Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, he couldn't make it here tonight for a really good reason. He's just about, he's stuck doing, uh, he's right in the center doing prep for Paul Thomas Anderson's new film. Um, and uh, you know, originally Bob De Niro told me about Leo DiCaprio when he worked with him in This Boy's Life. He said, you gotta work with this kid one day. 
And at that time, De Niro never really recommended anyone to me. Um, so in 20, 23 years, we made six pictures together now. Um, with Leo, um, Daniel's talking about faith. Yeah, I have faith in him. I know I could depend on him. Um, his immersion in the process of the person he's trying to play within the story is full. Um, his fearlessness is something which I've, is giving me life when I make a film. Um, and I think this kind of really, at times, maddening, relentless search for what might be the truth of every character he plays. Um, I mean, you know, he's a genius uh, in terms of uh, cinema, really is. And you could see it in the face. You could see it not only through the eyes, but he has the face of cinema. He doesn't have to say a word. It's all there. It's all there. You could see it in all his films that he's made, going from This Boy's Life of Gilbert Grape picture, which was wonderful, uh, all the way through The Extraordinary, The Revenant. Um, and when we started working together around the year 2000, uh, by the time we did Aviator and Departed, I felt a kind of resurgence of my own, resurgent, resurgence of my own energy, really. And in many ways, Killers of the Flower Moon is a culmination of all our work together. Um, all the way up, like at the end when he's at, at, in the witness stand, I knew I could just hold the camera on him and not cut away because I knew he would convey. He would convey everything that was at that decisive moment. And we did one take and I was moved on set. And that was it. One take. So I see him digging deeper into the corners of a of a human experience that many of us has really can't even bear to even acknowledge um, the weakness and the delusions of this guy in the film. You hate him, but you tend to also love him. Uh, and to all the contradictions of what it is to be human, um, I, I really know he's one of the, truly one of the greatest actors in the history of movies. Um, I thank him for everything in the past, uh, all the films he made together. You know, um, uh, Lily mentioned my uh, experience at Pine Ridge back in 1974. I just made Mean Streets and they, there was a possibility of making a film there and I was sent there. Um, but I was a kid, I was 29 or so, I didn't understand any of this. I was so naive and so ignorant of what was going on. And what, what I saw and experienced there with the Lakota at that time, only for a few days, um, uh, well, I mean, I cannot categorize it, I just can't but it stayed profoundly with me for almost 48, 50 years, really. And what helped that also during that time is I became friends with another person who sadly really is, uh, is not here tonight, that's Robbie Robertson. The great <laughs> Robbie, you know, who's uh, First Nations, half Mohawk. Um, and there was something about being with him for all those years from 74, 70, well, 76 on, uh, uh, that kept me deeply um, uh, ingrained, so to speak, of the story of the Native American and the First Nations. And then David Grant's book comes along, um, and um, I took a chance. I said, well, maybe this is the time to do it. This is the time to embrace it. I was very careful about it. Um, there was a long period of gestation, we did Irishman first because the CGI had to do with de-aging and if we waited any longer, no CGI could do it. <laughs> and we were beyond CGI. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, we did that, it was a year and a half, we're ready, we're working on the script, Eric Roth and I, and then COVID hits. And um, uh, that stopped everything and nobody knew what was gonna happen, whether we we're gonna live or die as, as it was. Uh, uh, luckily, before COVID hit, I made two trips to Oklahoma to Osage County. Um, and now look, I, I'm a New Yorker. All right. I'm gonna give me a minute or two. I'm in New York. I mean, I, for me, exterior, well, all right. It's outside of a building and then you go interior is a long hallway with one light bulb. <laughs> long hallway, you know, narrow, you know. I get to Oklahoma. They put me, they said we're gonna go to a ranch, the Hughes Ranch. 
And I said, okay, as a location scout, I get in this SUV, I guess, and they put me in the front seat, and we're driving, we're driving, we're driving, we're driving, we're driving, we're driving, I'm starting to go. And I'm like, it's going straight. And I feel so slow. And after like 40 minutes, I look at the speedometer, I say to myself, what the hell are we going so slow for? They're doing 75 to 80 an hour. <laughs> there was nothing there. I mean, it was everything there, but nothing, and I had, and then finally we get to the ranch, and we make a left, and we get to this gate, and another road for another 20 minutes, another 20 minutes, another 20 minutes, and finally we get there, and the guy who uh, is running the place at the, actually the northwest corner of it, he said, of the used ranch, a guy named Reride, Reride said, yep, I'm in charge of the northwest corner, and uh, the used ranch is one-tenth bigger than the island of Manhattan, and that by that point on, something happened. Luckily, this is right before COVID, because I started to see things differently from being there, um, and, and, and to think differently, to think, think, uh, think differently visually and narratively. And all, this, all these delays, the Irishman shooting, uh, uh, the COVID, all the, different work on the, all the different work on the script, that gave us something very valuable, which was time, and allowed us to to approach the story from every angle we could for about two and a half years. And one of those visits was very important because it was at the Gray Horse District. There are three districts there, Pahuska, Gray Horse, and Harmony. And at that dinner, there was kind of like a, a, a kind of a, a community center. Um, there were, I didn't expect it, but there were like 250, maybe more, of the Osage. And uh, they wanted to share a a traditional Osage dinner with me and, and our crew. I think Rodrigo, you were there? Yeah, so um, Ellen, I think, and a few of us, and we we're like sitting there, I didn't realize what was going on, um, and at some at one point, um, I sensed that there was some apprehension about me making this film for the Osage in terms of the films I m may be known for. Like, they're a little violent. You know, not all of them, but like some, you know. <laughs> and so they may, you know, anyway, there was some apprehension I felt. But as I sat there, um, I got clued into something which became a very troubling aspect for the story. Uh, people got up and spoke. Marvin steps and uh, Wilson pipes them. Uh, Brandy Lemon got up and talked about um, and she uh, uh, kind of um, allayed the fears of, of, of apprehension about my films because she said she loved silence. So that was one issue. But then Margie Burkhart got up, and Margie is the granddaughter of Ernest and Molly. She's the granddaughter. And she got up and she said, please remember that it's not simple uh, uh, villain and, and victim. She said, Molly and Ernest, they loved each other. They loved each other. And that that struck me right there. I realized we may be coming to the story from the opposite angle. It may be all wrong. What are we going to do? Then COVID hit, and, and that really changed it in the sense it gave us the time then to go and take the script, because Leo even picked up on it. He says, I think, where's the heart of the story? The heart of the story is Ernest and Molly. They were in love. How could this happen? So we took the whole story, in a sense, um, and we took the script and moved, kind of turned it inside out. Instead of coming from the outside in, we went from the inside out. Um, it's a story of love, trust, betrayal, um, and it had to be told through Molly and Ernest. Uh, that love is, is, was real, and as hard as that is to accept, and we knew that there was the heartbeat of the picture, that was it. Their relationship, a dance of love and death, um, and that for me was the microcosm of the greater tragedy of this greed, untethered greed, an unchecked power. So, it was perfect. Except all we had to do is now make the movie. And there was uh, COVID, et cetera, et cetera, and we had to stop. So the picture grew as we were making it. It, be it was organic. Um, to give it a living pulse, a human face, because the catastrophe of what had occurred that night that I saw, that night I was at um, Grey Horse, the catastrophe had a, a face. And I, then I began to understand. So for the Osage and us, 
when they agreed to help us, when all of us agreed to make the film together, that was our all, our all consuming, all consuming common effort. I thank the Osage, I thank the Osage Nation for all that. I thank you, and a generous, generous um, uh, honor here tonight with this film. Thank you so much.